Buying a house or maybe you're renovating your current space. Well, it's the perfect time to think about your smart home. And it's something that I'm asked about all the time. Welcome back to Yo-Yo Tech. My name is Bill and today I want to talk about my top recommendations for anyone looking to set up a smart home from scratch. So the first thing that always comes up, especially in new builds or renovations, is wiring. Now, if we were having these conversations 10, even five years ago, I would probably tell you to run as much cable as possible, but that's not so true anymore. I believe the wireless has finally reached a point that you can rely on it for most situations. So if you can't do it, don't worry about it. But that said, if you have the opportunity, I still think it makes sense to run some cables. And do it while your walls are open. It's the cheapest time. A case of a thousand feet of cable costs a little over a hundred bucks and you can order it right off Amazon. If you wait and do this later, companies can charge upwards of $250 per cable run to retrofit a house. Now, like I said, wireless networks work most of the time, but cables, they always work. So I would recommend that you run a Cat6 cable from a central place in your basement for all the things that you need to work all the time. So what are those? Well, to start with, let's make sure your wireless network can be the best it can be. I would recommend you run one Cat6 cable to several rooms in your house, depending on its size, at least two per floor, one near each end. You could run these to the ceiling for a future antenna, but in homes I prefer the wall mounted version. They blend in nice and they work just as well. And when thinking about wireless, don't forget other places that you may want to use wireless devices, like the garage for example, or the backyard. It wouldn't hurt to run a cable to these locations as well. Now on top of that, if you plan to install a security system now or in the future, I would suggest running one Cat6 Ethernet cable to any location you might want to put a camera. And keep in mind, this cable will supply the power for the cameras as well. So unlike older systems, you don't need to worry about installing a plug or running cables in the future for power. Best advice, if you're unsure, run an extra one now. It's easier to just leave the cable in the wall unused than install one at a later date. The final place I might suggest a Cat6 cable is behind your TVs. And by the way, this would replace the typical cable TV wires they used to run, as most TV services don't rely on them anymore anyway. Next up, I would think about lighting. It's one of the most common things that people look to control. There's nothing better than just asking Google to shut off the lights when you're on the couch watching a movie. Installing light switches is part of a reno or your new build, so you might as well make them smart ones. I personally like using CASA light switches. They're made by TP-Link and I have found them to be the most reliable. They're cost effective as well. They come in dimmer versions, simple on and off, and they can even be used for three and four way lighting situations like at the top and the bottom of your stairs. Now, like everything in this list, you can always do this later, but it's easier now while you're renovating or building a house. Links to the ones that I've used before are in the description below. This is one of those things that you won't ever regret. I have automations that turn off all the lights when I leave the house and back on when I come home. And for security, you can even set up random routines that turn on and off lights to make it look like your home when you're really away on vacation. And forget about resetting timers all year. Set up the outdoor lights to turn on a few minutes after sunset and they'll adjust automatically throughout the year. So let's move on to the fun part of setting up a new home, your entertainment center. If you head over to a big box store, they're going to wow you with all their smart TVs. But my recommendation is just look for the biggest one for your space, make sure it's 4K, and if you can afford it, OLED is the best. But don't worry about the smart TV functions. And if you have two models, one that they say has better smart functions, get the cheaper one. In fact, if you could find one with no smarts, it'd be a good option. Or at least ask if it'll default to the last HDMI input used rather than back to the smart TV menu when it turns on. I've used many, many, many smart TVs and they always fall short. So my suggestion is to just get an Apple TV for each one of your TVs and forget the built-in smarts. Don't get me wrong, I like Google TV, WebOS ties in, but this means each TV is different and they always feel slow and laggy over time, not to mention the ads and the ever-changing interface. I've had the same Apple TV device on my TVs for years now, and it's always worked perfectly. And on top of that, each TV has exactly the same look, feel, and apps. 
They even log in automatically so you don't constantly have to reset up the Netflix login. Apple TV can work wirelessly, but if you ran that Cat6 cable, I'd go ahead and plug it in. But you don't have to. And look, I'm a tech guy. Apple got this one right, and I hate to admit that. While we're on the topic of entertainment, let's talk audio. This is one of the areas that I would have suggested running speaker wire in the past. And if you really want those in-wall or the in-ceiling speakers, you can. But I think wireless does a good job nowadays and wireless allows you to change things up. Once you've gone wired, you're not going to want to be changing things. Now there are many options for music and you might end up with a mix and match. But if you're asking me, I would start with Sonos. Sonos is a little bit more expensive, but they build a good quality product and it lasts. You can start with just one and add more over time. I bought my first Sonos back in 2010 and it's still being used today. For me, I would look at getting a soundbar for your main TV. This can also play music when the TV's off. And from there, you can add a Sonos Era, a Roam or Move, which is wireless. They're all portable and they can be mixed and matched to create the perfect listening environment. Start with just one in a room, add a subwoofer, or pair a second one to create a stereo pair. The nice thing with Sonos is all your streaming services live in the speakers. So if you start the music and you leave the house, it keeps playing, allowing anyone in the house to stop or change the music. It's not like Bluetooth that turns off or gets flaky as soon as your phone gets too far from the speaker. Now, if Sonos is out of your price range, look at Google. They have a number of smart home speakers starting below 100 bucks, and they include Google Home. It's a smart home assistant. It's something you're going to want to turn on and off the lights anyway, but this is going to be a whole other video. Okay, that's probably all feeling like a lot. Next, how about something simple? Your thermostat. There's not really much to do here. Your builder is probably going to install a typical dumb thermostat. And the first thing I would do is upgrade this to a smart one. My recommendation is an Ecobee. They look nice and they have a very simple interface learns your schedule, adjusts automatically, and it's going to save you money in heating and cooling costs. Another good option is Nest by Google. It does pretty much the same, but I kind of feel like Google's forgotten about it, whereas the Ecobee thermostat, it's their main product, so you know they're going to keep it up to date, and I like the way the Ecobee looks. So that should get you started. A simple guide to making your smart home automation a key consideration in your new or renovated home. Remember, planning is key. Incorporating these technologies early on can save you time, money, and a lot of headaches in the future. If you found this guide helpful, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more smart home tips and tricks, and share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay smart and keep innovating in your space.